Speaking of people uh, being connected to their roots and being connected to their land, once again, we welcome back our year 11s and 12s from Wuhan, who had this amazing experience in being in the land, developing further their strong connection to their land, their people, and their heritage. And I'd like to welcome our year 11 and 12 students to offer a short reflection. Thank you. I'm in year 11, and I recently had the privilege of traveling to Israel and Prague with my year level on Opan. Along the many highlights, such as Shvil, the Bedouin experience, climbing the Sada, having a few painful encounters at the Dead Sea, and stargazing in Mitzvah Amon, which were incredible opportunities to experience with our peers and show our appreciation towards each other, moments of solemn and gratitude were prominent in our attendance to Yad Vashem and Har Herzl. We were, where we were able to commemorate those who selflessly put their lives at risk for the following generations of the Jews. Yad Vashem's Visual Center is the foremost resource center of cinematic work related to the Holocaust, identifying the six million fallen Jews as courageous and brave individuals through the exploration of stories, quotes, and unmatchable personal experiences. Although this experience was extremely confronting for most, it was mostly unforgettable and remarkable and allowed us to connect spiritually and emotionally with our religion and its values. Following our first two weeks in Israel, we arrived in Prague. Our first day consisted of beautiful and architecturally remarkable statues and buildings, whilst we observed the non-Jewish parts of Prague. Continuing our Prague experience and attending Prague's most exceptional Jewish landmarks and museums, and finally concluding our educational visit at Theresien, which was a, a concentration camp in the Czech Republic during World War II. We learned that by 1940, 19, uh, Nazi Germany had assigned the Gestapo to turn Theresien into a Jewish ghetto and concentration camp. Our succumb at Theresien was incredibly impactful as we delved deeper by listening to testimonies shared by a few of our peers and a candle lighting in memory of those perished in Theresien. Our trip continued as we returned to Israel and made our next stop in Step in Kibbutz Kramim, where we took a day trip to Step Al Khair to visit the first Prime Minister of Israel, Ben Gurion's grave, and grasp an understanding of his quest for an independent Jewish state. He formally proclaimed the establishment of the State of Israel, and he was the first to sign the Israeli Declaration of Independence, further allowing us to recognize how the State of Israel became and empowered us to connect with Israel and Judaism on a deeper level. Through all pun, we learned a new sense of culture when visiting the Kotel. Our connection with Israel expanded as those who had never explored the Kotel personally were able to deepen their Judaism by admiring the holiest Jewish landmark. We spent our last Shabbat at the Kotel, where we had our final Kabbalat Shabbat, which was exceptionally significant to conclude our spiritual experience with. Ultimately, Ulpan for me was not only a fun and enjoyable experience, where I was able to establish new friendships and connections with all of my peers, as well as unbelievable madrichim and teachers, but it was also an enriching spiritual experience full of new learning opportunities and countless moments of gratitude and awareness for how Israel became what it is today and how it will continue to grow and evolve over time. And here we are. Summer break has concluded. We're all ready for the academic year to commence. Before we do such a thing, I would like to share with everyone here a bit about what was the best Year 11 Ulpan program ever. It began with an initial mesmerization of Abdallah in a cave in Sfat, continued with journeys around Golan, witnessing the IDF training facilities in action. It continued with a unique holiness to the Kotel, as well as being verklempt at Terezin in Prague, and then being in awe over technological wonders in Tel Aviv. The list goes on and on. And the truth is that, as exemplary as our committee-run pop-up stations were this morning, they cannot possibly paint the picture of what was a five-week haven of both enhancing our cohort's unity, as well as shaping each and every Upan student's identity. This is an inescapable reality about Upan. It does the imperative job of taking a group of diaspora Jews, us, We've had exposure to Israel through schooling and media consumption, but Upan ensures that we depart the program 
as emboldened Zionists, wielding a newly forged, unbreakable bond with our promised land. Now, how exactly does that connection affect one's life? It's a fair question you may be asking. Speaking for myself, I can say that prior to a pun, my halakhic observance was minimal and the prospect of undertaking Aliyah was improbable. Yet after five weeks of consistent participation in Shafari services and observing Shabbat, I returned to Melbourne with a sole thought, it cannot end here. And the essential message for everyone here to take away is that irrespective of how observant one is before, during or after a pun, uh, which services you attended, whether they were on the 10 or 11 program, every single student who has been on a pun, and every single student who will be on a pun, will have their faith and cultural ties with the modern state of Israel forever intertwined with their identity and ideology. And it's that reality that unites us as a Jewish community as it has for over a millennia. And that is why we must never forget to say, Am Israel Chai.